Hi all, welcome to this, the second last video in our series looking at urban geography and in today's video we're going to look at our second case study which if you've not guessed what it is yet, it's not a big surprise, that is Mumbai. Now, when we look at Mumbai, just a little bit of scene setting, um, I mean, I, I went for India's powerhouse, uh, it really is one of the uh, most significant cities in India. Uh, you know, I mean, it is one, it's the largest city in India generally, it's got a population of uh, 20 million plus, the, and then you, know, when you look at some of the statistics in terms of industry, it handles 40% of India's trade by sea, 60% of trade by air, 10% of everybody who works in a factory in India is employed in Mumbai, those factories produce 25% of the goods that are made in India, in terms of the actual value that those goods are then worth, and the population raise a third of all of the taxes raised in India. So, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't take a lot to say that it is a hugely significant global city. Now, the big thing that we're going to focus on in terms of Mumbai is we're going to look at housing, and we're going to look at some of the problems with housing in Mumbai. So just to kind of pull out a stat, that we've just mentioned there, 20 million people live in Mumbai. Now that is four times the population of Scotland living in one city. So we see all these people moving there because there's jobs. You know, I mean, linking again all of that trade that we discussed that occurs in Mumbai is a huge pull factor. It's a huge draw into the city. Uh, these people are moving from some of the outlying rural regions to move into the city. And I'll just pull up the rest of this now. Uh, when they arrive, there's very, very little available in the way of housing. Uh, what is there tends to be reasonably expensive, if we're talking about what you or I would consider housing. So for most of the immigrants that are moving in, it's well beyond their reach in terms of affordability. Uh, so that leads to some of the issues we see. It leads to people living in either squatter camps or shanty towns, and they both have huge issues uh, attached to them. So squatter camps first. So squatter camps, and I'm just going to pull up all the points here so you can see them. Uh, squatter camps, so it's an area where people settle on land that isn't their own, and they construct their own really poor quality housing. So we're talking about people arriving at an area on the outskirts of the city, maybe along a roadway or along a railway line, uh, and they throw up a shack. And we're talking about building with makeshift materials. Uh, we're talking about, you know, scraps of tin sheeting, wood, different bits of cloth that they've scavenged uh, from the surrounding area. These areas won't have access to any amenities, so no running water, sewerage, power, so on and so forth. And they've got no they've got no actual um, government provided services, so you don't have access to education for children that are living in these areas. You don't have any hospitals or any healthcare uh, at all, and rubbish collection things like that don't happen. So all of that combines, and you get disease. You've got a lot of people living in very cramped conditions, and. There is a huge amount of refuse and human waste, also animal waste, which results in disease, dysentery, cholera, uh, tuberculosis, things like that, you know, reasonably speaking, run rampant. Um, children re raised in these areas, I mentioned earlier, they don't have access to schooling, so they don't have access to education, so they can't get the skills and training that would allow them to get more highly paid jobs which would allow them to move out of these areas. Uh, and as I said earlier, the kind of immigrants we're talking here are people who have moved from some of the poorest rural areas in India, and they're moving to these areas in the hope for a better life, but they don't have any funds, they don't have any money to back them up. Now, if a squatter camp is around for a while, it's going to become what's known as a shanty town. Now, conditions in shanty towns are still really, really poor, uh, but they are marginally better than the squatter camps, and the principal reason for that is they've been around longer. So because it's been around longer, it's, it's just more established, there's more stuff there. Uh, there's some of the characteristic things that we see in shanty towns. So the buildings uh, might actually now be 
built with brick in their walls. Um, but you're still talking scrap. You know, we might have a, a, a sheet tin roof, but again, there's a scrap material that the buildings are made from. Now, a house for six to ten people is nine meters squared. Now, it's it's a funny thing. This try it yourself. You know, what I mean, go find a space where you can walk. Uh, you know, three steps in one direction, turn ninety degrees, walk three steps in that direction. The square that you've just drawn, kind of a corner of, that's nine meters squared. I mean, you, your step will be roughly a metre, so it's not a large space. And then think that's six to ten people living in that space. Some of the houses will have access to electricity, although we are talking about, you know, going to the nearest electricity line and illegally tying on some wire to it and running it to your house. Uh, some of them will have access to basic sanitation, some will have access to a standpipe, perhaps, to gain basic water. Uh, we still don't see any refuse collection, uh, no police, uh, medical help, firefighter services are there, I'll pull up the rest of these now, uh, very very little in the way of education, and because of this in many shanty towns, the rates of crime, suicide, drug abuse, disease are really, really high. And if the bit about houses of, you know, 6 to 10 people being 9 metres squared didn't make the point, these areas are extremely overcrowded. But we do see some industry in them. You know, we do see some small industries developing. So that's a kind of a general overview of what, you know, most shanty towns are like. Um, what are some of the solutions to these problems? So the, the Indian government has obviously tried a lot of different things over the years to try and address the issues of large numbers of people moving into the major cities and founding, for lack of a better phrase, shanty towns to house themselves. So some of the things I've tried, you know, evictions and bulldoze houses, literally go in, kick folk out, and drive over the kind of hastily constructed buildings with a bulldozer. Uh, it seems very straightforward, but it is very straightforward. It's big issue with it is, it's not particularly effective. These people just move somewhere else in the city. You've not solved the problem, you've just moved it on. Uh, we try to relocate people to high-rises with basic amenities, but again... This is unpopular because a lot of people work, uh, live sorry, directly above workshops and things like that. That is their source of income. And if you live in a high rise, that's not the case. And we're talking about people who won't have access to transport. They don't have the funds to pay for transport. So being far away from your place of work is a major issue. Uh, improve the shanty towns that are there. So some of the things we do, we provide sanitation, water, schools, uh, make the houses actually built more uh, in a more structurally sound manner, give people access to the actual legal rights to the land they live on. When you do that, you tend to find people take better care of the land because they own it, so they don't want to mess it up. But doing all that's expensive. It costs money. Uh, sometimes you get local people form cooperatives, they form groups to try and improve the land themselves. And one of the, the more recent things that's been tried is India's tried building a new town, Navi Mumbai, or New Mumbai, or New Bombay, is, is what that technically means, um, to house some of these people and to reduce the pressure on services in the area. Um, and again, this is something that is reasonably effective, but it depends on a lot of other things being available uh, in terms of uh, work and amenities, etc. Now... I'm going to wrap this video up here. Um, the next video and the final video that we're going to have in our urban unit is going to move on to our developing world case study, which is a little bit more specific than Mumbai. It's a shanty town that's actually in Mumbai, and it's called Daravi. And we'll speak about that next time, guys.